In this Blender video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of two different EV light probes. First we'll look at reflection cube maps, and then reflection planes. For this video, I'm using Blender version 2.8 beta. Since this is a beta version of Blender, you should be aware that some of the things that I'll be showing might change. When using EV, there is more than one way to handle reflections. One method is to enable screen space reflections. I covered this method in a previous video. You can find a link to it in the video description. Another method is to use reflection cube maps and reflection planes, which is what I'll be demonstrating in this video. To use Eevee, switch to the render panel and select it here. To view the rendered image in the viewport, press Z and select rendered. The two spheres in this scene are both using the principled shader with the roughness value set to zero, which will make them reflective. The sphere on the right is a metallic material, and the sphere on the left is non-metallic. You'll notice that the spheres are not reflecting the floor or each other. This is because screen space reflections is disabled and no light probes are being used. It looks like the spheres are only reflecting the light source, but they are actually reflecting the background as well. To see this, I'll add a checkerboard pattern to the background. The light probes that I'll be adding don't make the spheres reflective. Instead, they define what will be reflected. To make the sphere on the right reflect the floor and the other sphere, I'll add a reflection cube map light probe to the same location as the sphere on the right. So I'll select the sphere, press Shift S, and select cursor to selected. Then I'll press Shift A and select light probe, and then reflection cube map. Now I need to bake it. To do that, I'll switch to the render panel and open the indirect lighting section. Here I'll click the bake cube map only button. I'm also going to enable Auto Bake. This will cause the baking to update whenever I make a change to the reflection cube map. However, it will not automatically update if I make a change to the spheres or the floor. After baking, you can see that there are reflections of the floor in the sphere, but there are also some black circles. I can get rid of these circles by adjusting the reflection cube map clipping. So with the reflection cube map selected, I'll open the Object Data panel, and then I'll open the Viewport Display section. Next, I'll add a check mark next to Clipping. This displays some lines that show the clipping distance of the reflection cube map. Next, I'll increase the clipping start value until I can see the end of the clipping lines. There are orange dots at the end of the clipping lines which show where the clipping starts. When the dots were inside the geometry of the sphere, the black circles were visible. So adjusting the clipping start value until the dots are just outside the sphere produces a nice reflection. However, it's important not to adjust this value too high. You'll notice that this dot is in between the sphere and the floor. If I increase the clipping start value even more, then the dots will be below the floor. This causes the reflection to show a hole in the floor. So the clipping start value should be adjusted until this dot is between the sphere and the floor. Now the reflection looks good. Now let's look at the reflection in the sphere on the left. You'll notice that the right side of the sphere is reflecting the floor, but the left side is not. That's because the reflection cube map is only enclosing the right side of the sphere. This outer line of the reflection cube map shows where it has influence. The area between this outer line and the inner line is the area where the influence tapers off. So there is a strong reflection on the far right side of the sphere, and it tapers off toward the left. This area where the influence tapers off can be controlled by adjusting the falloff value. If I reduce it to zero, then there is no area where it tapers off. So the reflection transitions straight from a strong reflection of the floor to no reflection of the floor. Next, I'll scale up the reflection cube map to enclose both spheres. Now the reflection of the floor in the left sphere looks good, but on the left side of the sphere, you can see the reflection of a sphere which isn't there. 
That's because the reflections in the left sphere are using reflection cube map information gathered at the location of the right sphere. To fix this, I can just add another reflection cube map to the left sphere. So I'll scale down the size of this reflection cube map, then I'll press Shift D to duplicate and drag it on the Y axis over to the left sphere. Now the reflections look good for both spheres, but sometimes this is not necessary. To show you what I mean, I'll delete this reflection cube map and scale the other one up in size again. Now I'll hide the left sphere and unhide a monkey that I added earlier. Then I'll click the Bake Cube Map button again. Now you can see the reflection of the floor in the monkey and the reflection of the monkey in the sphere. Both of these look good. If I rotate the view, you can also see the reflection of the monkey here. This reflection is not correct, but it's also not very noticeable. So in this case, by using a single reflection cube map, we can get nice results for both of these objects. Now let's change the monkey into a glass-like material. So I'll set the transmission value to 1. I'll also change the color to white. We're also going to look at the sphere through the monkey, so I'll change its color to red to make it easier to see. I'm also going to change it to a non-metallic material. Then I'll bake the cube map. You can see the floor through the monkey, but you can't see the sphere. The solution to this is to give the monkey its own reflection cube map. So just like before, I'll reduce the size of the reflection cube map around the sphere. Then I'll press Shift D to duplicate and drag it on the Y axis over the monkey. The size of the reflection cube map doesn't completely cover the monkey's ears, so I'll scale it up in size a little. Now the floor can be seen through the monkey as well as the red sphere. We're about ready to look at a reflection plane light probe, which is useful for flat surfaces like this floor, but we need to get some things ready first. I'll start by changing the roughness of the floor to zero to make it glossy. I'll also darken the floor color to make the reflections in the floor more visible. You can see the reflection of the background in the floor, but not the sphere. There are some reflections in the floor under the monkey where the reflection cube map intersects the floor, but the reflection does not look correct. To fix this, I'm going to prevent the reflection cube map from intersecting the floor. So I'll select the reflection cube map and change the probe type to box. Then I'll scale it down in size until it doesn't intersect the floor. Now I'll switch to right side view. Then I'm going to scale it up on the Y axis so that it covers the ears. The reflection cube map is no longer affecting the floor. Now I'll add a reflection plane to make the floor reflect the monkey and the sphere. I'm going to add it to the same location as the floor, so I'll select the floor and press Shift S and then center the 3D cursor to the floor. Then I'll add a reflection plane. Next, I'll scale it up in size until it's a little larger than the floor. Then I'll move it up just a little on the Z axis. Now the floor looks like a mirror and you don't see the pattern that was on the floor. This is not actually what it will look like in the final render. To see what it will look like, switch to the Object Data panel and in the Viewport Display section, disable Show Data. This is what the floor will look like in the final render. You can see the reflection of the sphere and the monkey. If you don't see the reflections, then you may need to flip the reflection plane over. Now I'll show you something that I'm not sure whether it's a bug in the software or if it's just a consequence of how Eevee works. In either case, it's something that you should be aware of. If I change the floor to a metallic material, and then I bake the cube map, 
The floor as viewed through the monkey looks very dark. The reflection of the floor in the sphere is also very dark. To make this easier to see, I'll change the material of the sphere to a metallic material. Sometimes when you make a change, Eevee doesn't update, so just rotate the view a little and then it will update. I can improve how this looks by making the floor partially non-metallic. Currently, the metallic value of the floor material is set to 1, which makes it completely metallic. So I'll reduce this value to 0 0.9. Then I'll bake the cube map again. Now the floor pattern can be seen in the reflection on the sphere. The floor as seen through the monkey is still dark, but it did improve slightly. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.